Hello, it's uh, Spoke with Cheddar, and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing the Razer Viper Mini and the HK Gaming Series L. Mine says Series M, but I have the L. I checked the measurements and everything. Anyway, um, this is going to be like one take, super uh, jagged. I have stuff on the right side here because, uh, well, I don't have a webcam, so I'm using my phone on a program called Ivy Cam, but it only gives me 4x3 recording. And it's gonna keep doing that thing. I'm really sorry about that. Anyway, let me get right into it. Starting with the Razer Viper Mini. Um, I'll start with the actual build quality. I don't know if you could hear that. It was the clicks. If you couldn't, I'll boost the audio during that part. Um, so with this, look, what I want to talk about mostly is the use cases for this and when it's actually like acceptable to use this, right? So this is the Razer Viper Mini. Its shape is kind of like a smaller S2 or XM1, except the hump is pushed a bit more to the middle and it doesn't have as far of as a pull down, which would make you think it's more like an FK3 or a O minus, but it really has a lot of features from the S2 as well. It's a mix of them, which is why I really, really like this shape. I thought the Razer Viper was a bigger version of those as well, and I thought if they, if they make one between the Viper and the Viper Mini, it will actually satisfy a lot of people as one of the best shapes out there, period. Um, the Viper Mini is better for me, because as you can see I have baby hands, because well I'm a baby. And um, uh, in terms of quality, the build quality is amazing, the grip like, is good, you could add some grip tape if you want, mine is completely stock right now, scroll wheel is good, clicks are good. Uh, DPI button adjustment is all good, although I couldn't adjust lift off distance, but I'm sure there's a way to. Cable and skates aren't great, but I actually like more controlled skates like the Tiger Arcs, so th this was decent. And the cable, I would say the, it's worth replacing the cable and maybe the skates. RGB is really tasteful, but the rest of it isn't really worth replacing. You could add grip tape if you want. Wireless mod would probably be cool because a lot of people want this wireless. Um, in terms of use cases, I think. So I personally fingertip this and run it on 31 centimeters per 360. I almost always use a claw grip and 47 or 74 centimeters per 360, but I wanted to try something new. So I mostly use this for Siege, which I'm totally a beginner at. Now, um, in terms of how it performed, I think it was great. I In Siege, um, I'm really new. I was playing at like a gold 2 level. Uh, I was getting lots of like easy frags. Um, in Kovacs, I could beat my scores on tracking with this. Fingertip arm aim tracking this on 31 centimeters per 360 is so good for me, especially because I'm used to hot, really low sense on me. Um, target switch I was decent at, but my click timing kind of suffered. I didn't have, I feel like, as much control, but some practice can improve that. Now let's talk about the mouse pad here. The Series M. This is where I have a bit of an issue. The Series M is a great mouse pad. It's like the Thor, like a lot of people would say. But the thing is, in terms of extra pad, I would only recommend the Equate Plus and the Aqua Control Plus over the Thor. And there's a reason for that, which is that, honestly, the Surface, which is good, doesn't have as many use cases. If you want something fast but with control, you get the Decanic Control. If you want something pure speed, you get the Helios or even like the Glass 2.0. If you want something slower, you can get the G640, the GSR, even the QCK. So there's not much point for this. I'm gonna pull up this Microsoft Paint thing I did, which had these, uh... okay. So I really don't have this planned out well, but we'll look through it. On the slow side, you have the Glorious, and the GSR, the G640 and QCK, MP510, that's where you have the series, the Decanted Control, and then you have the Helios on the fast side. Because of this, there's not really that many use cases for the series. Like, it's it's not a bad surface. You have decent glide and decent stopping power too. But the problem is, it doesn't have enough glide or enough stopping power for me to justify you actually using it. And my camera just froze there. I think it's going to get back here soon, but we'll see. Anyway, um, in terms of recommendation, it's a good pad. It's worth the money. But the problem is for most people, there's a better pad. Oh, and by the way, I'm running the uh, uh, Viper Mini on a bungee. Didn't have cord problems. Anyway, yeah, I feel like for something like Quake or Apex, I want something a little bit faster. For something like CS or Val or even Kovacs, I want something a bit slower, which means there's a dramatically smaller amount of use cases for this pad. I could only really justify using it on Siege, and even then it was mostly only to improve on fingertip aiming. 
So overall, I recommend the Viper Mini 100%. If you're looking at it, go for it. Look, with the fact that this exists, there's no reason for an MM710. It's a bit shorter than the Glorious in this aspect, but it's wider and taller, which means it suits more people because it fills your hand more, but it also gives that small mouse feel. There's no point getting an MM710 now that this exists. It's crazy good. 40 bucks? I don't understand how. The pad. If you bought it, you made a good decision, but there could have been a better option out there for you. That's like my main thought on it. I wouldn't say not to get it. Also, the surface is a bit weird for a cloth pad, just in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, even though there's thousands of reviews on these products. And have a good one.